Grafton is it's a monochrome, traditional, beautiful little country town. We now have forever, probably, the distinction of you know, having given the world a man who's turned out to be Australia's worst mass murderer at this point in time. Ten days ago, Christchurch, New Zealand experienced an act of terror like none before. During Friday prayers, 50 Muslims at two separate mosques were shot dead, another 50 injured. People, you know, dead. People were alive five minutes ago, just praying. They have done nothing. They have done nothing. It was an attack calculated for the social media age. Intricately planned, filmed and streamed live online for a global audience. My feeling is that he chose New Zealand because it was a soft target in terms of security. And perhaps he chose it to make a point, to illustrate that even a relatively tolerant, quiet society on the very edge of the world was not immune to terrorism. The attack has exposed deep flaws in the counter-terrorism strategies of Western nations like New Zealand and Australia. Authorities have absolutely failed to understand and grasp the threat of far-right extremism. The Christchurch shooter should absolutely not have fallen under the radar. And the fact that he did is evidence of a massive failing in global counter-terrorism strategies. Police arrested 28-year-old Australian Brenton Tarrant 36 minutes after the shootings began. The next day, he appeared in court charged with murder. Mr Tarrant, you are remanded without plea. Next appearance will be in the Christchurch High Court on 5 April 2019 at 9.15am. I've noted that you're not making an application to be admitted to bail. I've also noted that you're not making any application for suppression of publication of your name or of any particular that could lead to your identification. Back please, Your Honour. Do you want to please just stand out of custody? By the time we got up to this end of Dean's Avenue, there were some ambulances there, there were people covered in blood, there were people out who'd come streaming out of the mosque who were just shell-shocked, devastated people crying. I asked one young man, you know, what, what had happened? And he said, there's been a shooting, I was in the mosque. Um, he said, there are people dead everywhere. Um, and I, mean, I was just shocked, horrified, and I just held his arm and said, we're with you. Um, whatever happens, we're with you. As night fell, Haroon Feroz arrived to visit his uncle, who'd been shot. He tried to hide, like, on the corner by the door, and then there were, like, two or three dead bodies just dropped on top of him, and he was, like, just there, and then there was, like, blood all over him. So he just pretended that he's also dead until the guy, like, reload the magazine and then came for the second round and that when he actually came for the second round that's when he got shot twice one just kissed him on his on the hip and then the second one actually went on his back and that's at that point he lost consciousness and he was like in a lot of pain but he stood still and he just tried to just go get through that moment you know which was the most terrifying moment that anyone anyone can ever imagine very very terrifying so he hid under the bodies under the bodies from what I understood, just to protect himself, because other, because they were dead already, because they were like completely, they were shot multiple times. 